Hello and welcome to Rolling With Two. I'm Will and with me as always is the one who went in there despite me telling her not to go in there. <laughs> Sarah. And today we're doing a two player perspective and accessibility for Don't Go In There. Sarah, tell us a bit about this game. All right, Don't Go In There is a push your luck set destruction card and dice game. So as you explore the haunted house, you must collect items, but all the items are cursed. Cards have various effects that help you get rid of cards, so you have to collect sets wisely. The winner is whoever has the lowest curse points at the end of the game. So Will, how do the rules change for two players? So for every player count, you're gonna use a different number of sets of items, because there'll be like mirrors and cats and tomes and things like that. So you'll use a whole set of that. And then you'll take out a different number based on the number of players. And it's random, so it's, you're gonna shuffle it all together. So you can't count on something always being in there despite mm -hmm. knowing, oh, we're gonna be playing with mirrors. Right. Type of thing. Uh, additionally, there is no bot. Nope. No That's Nana because Man. this is Nana Man's house and he's dead. Oh! <laughs> so, it's all cursed and haunted. Yes, it is. And stop taking his stuff. <laughs> but you have to take his stuff. Yeah, you kind of have to, but Let's talk about issues at a two-player count. We couldn't think of any. No, we really couldn't. This this game is is good for. It, I think a lot of it can be attributed to how it scales for player counts, and I think a lot of games should scale more often for player counts. And this one does it really well. So yes. There's, there's nothing detrimental that we've seen in other games for two-player count. Yeah, because uh, all the messing with cards, those are actually the timer of the game mm -hmm. because you all don't end until all the stuff is taken. So by them meddling with uh, how many cards are being played with means that they've really dialed in how good it feels at the various player counts. Yes. And so it's very, very good at two players. Agreed. All right, well, so moving on to what it does well, it's very tactical at a two-player game. Uh, it's just um, just the going back and forth, and you only have one other person that you have to contend with. <laughs> yes. So, as you said it's uh, earlier to me, it's very easy <laughs> to get the cards you don't want. <laughs> That's true. Yes, I mean, so the whole thing is each room will trigger once there are three meeples in there, regardless of whose meeples they are. And because there's three cards and whoever is in there the farthest will take the first card. Well, with a two player, generally speaking, one person's gonna probably have two of their meeples in and the other person's gonna have one. Or there's been times where- One person has one three. One person has all three, so they just take all the cards. You may not want all those cards, <laughs> but then that's kind of the nature of the game. Um, but just like I said, in general, if you're trying to go for certain sets, because again, the sets are how you can reduce your points in a higher player count, you might go for a room, but it got you get a meeple in there and there's a second card you want, but if you have enough players around the table, it may trigger and go off before you can get another meeple in there. Yeah. And the reason why you want some of these cards, despite everything being negative points, <laughs> yeah. is because there's going to be abilities. Yes. Once you hit the second one of this, something happens and you can get rid of cards. Yeah. Once you get all of this, you can get rid of other cards. Uh, at the end of the game, if you have this many ghosts, you can get rid of all but one of this card yeah. type of thing. So you have to pay a very close attention to what you're gathering, uh, both on cards and ghosts mm -hmm. to try to reduce and destroy what yeah. you're collecting. So the game probably, now granted we've only played it two players, but extrapolating, the chaos level at a two player game is a little bit more mitigated. Yeah. I think it would be a lot more chaotic at a higher player count where you would just, you really wouldn't have as much, mm, I don't want to say control because there's still a lot about this game that you don't have control over. Uh, but again, that mitigating it. Yes. All right. So accessibility. Honestly, there was really like one minor, very minor thing for accessibility. The two value ghost has a, the red number on a black background. And generally speaking, not everybody who has colorblind issues is gonna have problems with red and black, but it is more common. But the great thing is these ghosts, 
they're all black. And then the one value are all white. And the five value are mostly red and they look like flames. And they're also really big. And they're really big and they're three different sizes. So feature wise, every other aspect, you can tell them apart really easily. You're just, just may not actually be able to see the two on the black background because red on black can be challenging for some people. And that's saying something because <laughs> another weird thing is with how much production goes in into this game, all the ghost tokens are not only different shapes, mm -hmm. they're different art. Yeah, everything is uniquely shaped. Uh, I'll, it'll be up on the screen hopefully about now. Um, and you can see that they really put a lot, I mean a lot, into... Like, I don't know if it's a, the, their passion for the game, but you can definitely see that they took a lot of care to make this, uh, I don't know, engaging. Yeah. Uh, and, like, the dice is like, oh, well, uh, they're kind of a little artsy with the ghosts on some of the sides, and, like, that's going to be tough to see. Well, honestly, all you really care about is, is there a ghost on it, or is it a blank face? Right. But, again, they did three unique ghost faces when they could have just done... One ghost face on three sides and three blank sides, and they, nobody would have said anything. But now you get three really cool different ghost faces, and it's just completely awesome. Yeah, it's it's extremely <laughs> weird that there is a whole ton of art mm -hmm. in in places where it would normally be an accessibility issue. Right. But this game is designed so smart that they know. It's not a problem. Right. I mean, I hate to say that it like doesn't matter, uh, but it, it gets you into the game so the aesthetics here do not conflict with the accessibility, which is something we have seen yes. in other games where they're like, they go real artsy on it and that fails accessibility. But here they did go Cra not crazy, but kind of. I mean, no, they they went crazy. Who, I'm gonna say they went crazy. I've never really seen anybody else where they have a one value token make every single one of those one value tokens different shaped, but it doesn't get in the way of someone accessing this game. Yes. So that's really good. So I think we've kind of moved into the what it does right. Uh, contrast on all the cards, I, there's no problem seeing any of the iconography. It's very sharp and yet still very aesthetically pleasing for being a lighthearted, campy, I don't want to say horror because it's spooky. It, it, it spooky. is. Spooky. I mean, they, they do have art in here that's yeah, just downright creepy. I really don't like the, um, the clown <laughs> and the dolls. But yeah. anyways... <laughs> <laughs> and they chose good colors yes. for the meeples. Yeah, so that's another thing. When a lot of games, when you have player pieces that then have to go on a board and they interact, sometimes don't pick very distinct colors. They did a great job here. They're all the same shape, but you've got white, purple, green, orange, and yellow. And the orange and yellow don't conflict because I've also seen that be a problem. And because they did purple and green instead of blue and green, that's very different. And I'm glad they threw white in because I don't think enough games use just white and black. Because any... Or if they do, it's for like, a, uh, this is an AI that's covering something right. up. They don't usually use it for player colors. But if using it for player colors, that means you have better contrast when picking the other player colors. So mm -hmm. very good. Um, so open information. So this is for those with severe vision issues. There's only two things that are kept secret. And that is after you collect the ghost tokens, you have a little player shield thing. You keep the ghost tokens hidden behind. But like we said, since they're all distinctly shaped and different sizes between the yeah. one and the- The ones are noticeably smaller, smaller than the twos, which are definitely noticeably smaller than the fives. Yeah. Um, so Will was really easy, able to keep those ghosts secret. And then when you have to do exchanges, he was able to give those over without any problem. Yeah. Then also one room, the secret passage, has one card face down. And so that's the only time where if you have severe vision issues and you go to it first, um, you'd need to use some sort of assistive device or someone not playing the game to help you potentially read it. Yeah. Um, thankfully, I think the few times we we really played with that, I went to those rooms first. There was enough other stuff <laughs> I wanted to do that it was a low priority, and yeah, it, it 
it didn't become an issue. Right, because if I went to it first and then he came after, I'd just flip it over and read it to him because I already knew what it was. So. Yes. Uh, yeah. So this is a really good accessible game. And if you're looking at it cognitively, it's it's not. It's not much of an overload. It, it's, I mean, maybe at first, just because... For me, some of the concepts were very different than games we've played. But yeah, because set de destruction yeah, was that was a little a bit a small hiccup, but not really. Um, I think it's a great twist on it. Yes. So conclusion: two players. <laughs> yes, I think it's great at two players. Um, again, I'm a little concerned that I personally might not like the chaos at higher player counts, but maybe it's kind of like King of Tokyo, and the chaos gets really fun. Yeah, I would say the same type of thing is mm -hmm. I think the different player counts will give you different experiences, yeah. but I don't think any of the experiences are bad. Mm -hmm. So two player definitely would play this. Uh, for nothing else, the production. Yeah. It's it's fun to play with mm -hmm. all the things because the box itself turns into a dice tower. Yeah, and the dice are glow in the dark, which mm. although you can't play the game in the dark, but the dice glow in the dark, so that's yes. cool. So, uh, two player, yes. yes. Accessibility. I give this game thumbs up, like double thumbs up. If I could do my big toes up, that would be four. I don't, <laughs> anyways. Yes. Great accessibility, so definitely recommend it. Yeah, for me, this is the first time I saw something that leaned heavily into the art aesthetic. Yeah. And made it accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, so, my my hat's off to this game because <laughs> and to it, the designers of the it, game. designers of this game because they went above and beyond making this game accessible agreed it's impressive as all get out mm -hmm. which is what we should do we should get out of this house because we are told not to be in here <laughs> yeah we shouldn't have gone in there but we yeah. did and now we're cursed which brings me to my question sarah why did you go in there well i heard that there were books you know i like books so I have to get all the books. And she, and she did. And I, well, except when you stole them. Okay, well, that's, that's enough of that. <laughs> because why would you ever roll with just one when you can be rolling, rolling with, with two? two? And remember, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us on the various social media platforms at... Rolling with two. That's T-W-O. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you have time, check out the other content Nanaman has found for you. Because remember, he's rolling with you.